timely manner. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, pencils down, John. Okay, and we are recording the meeting. I did remember it this time. Right in front of me. <clears throat> this is a pen. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to the staff uh, for the goal one background report. Okay, thank you. Um, you'll remember uh, from the meeting materials we got last time that there was a brief background report that talked about some of the needs and some of the involvement efforts that the county has made since 1979 trying to update the comprehensive plan. And uh, basically it started out with the original plan, a similar process where we had six advisory committees each of the planning areas that are throughout the county. And uh, once the comp plan was adopted in 1980, five of those groups disbanded voluntarily. The Southwest Coastal, which is the Arch Cape area, continued theirs for a very long time. And it was uh, in 19, uh, 2017 when the Board of Commissioners decided that uh, that group should be dissolved and that the Planning Commission really had already been acting at, in the function of a citizen uh, advisory committee and that they would be the main citizen committee for the county. So in... Uh, either, either main committee or the committee? The committee, yes. The, 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 like only. Yeah. It took the place. Yeah. Right. Uh, yes, thank you for that. So uh, over the years, though, the county has done these little projects where they have tried to increase uh, public involvement and get citizen input. And a couple of those plans were included with the original background materials that were sent out. Uh, one being the 2012 strategic plan and the other being uh, plots of Vision 2030 together. And that one looked at a lot of different areas, including arts, economics, education, um, and where we wanted to be come 2030. And like we talked about at our last meeting, a lot of those goals really haven't changed. Um, and as you'll see, today we've got three members of the public plus our board chair, and I do want to introduce her. Sorry. Four members. I forgot that you were there. Of the public. Stuart oh, yeah, Emmons. Hi, is yes. it okay to sit here? So I'm sitting yeah. there. No. Okay. No, no, yes. Just sign it. That's okay, okay, I did. All right. Yeah. So, um, really, our whole purpose of discussion today is to talk about citizen involvement. How do we increase it? How do we get more people involved at every step of the process? Um, and you, as a group, will talk about that later. Um, in the meantime, uh, I would like to welcome uh, Chair Neverford, Chair of the Board of Commissioners. She'll give you a few words of welcome as well. And then we do have speakers from the sh representing the Chinook Nation. And uh, are you both going to speak? Or yes. Just you okay. No. Um, no. He's speaking. Okay. And then Don will address as well. So, Chair. Well, thank you for what you're doing. You're exemplifying what Clats of County, the best of Clats of County, volunteerism. We depend mightily on our volunteers. As you may know, well, let's see, I think it was last year or the year before, it was just under $500,000 that is saved by the volunteer hours that are put in for our county. It makes a huge difference. And <coughs> plus, being involved is, is a joy because then you get to learn. You get to see what is going on around you and you get to have input into what happens in the county. And that's, that's really important, citizen involvement, just like it is in the broader country. But it, this is our area, and thank you very much for doing this. Um, it's, I'm not exactly sure what your responsibilities will be throughout the whole process. What so the Class of Plans Committee is going to look at all 18 goals in the comp plan, mm -hmm. and then in addition to that, the Class of Plan uh, community plans that have been done, and how those may need to be updated and okay. incorporating some of those. Oh, goals. that's a lot. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot, a lot of detail. So I've been through this process twice, um, and uh, I know that it can be tedious and uh, takes a lot of brain energy. So make sure you drink your water and have snacks <laughs> because it really does good. It does take a lot of energy. But thank you for doing this.
Yes. And it's kind of a three-year commitment. Yes. Right. Just, just for curiosity. That, that's right. Yes, I know. Three years? Yes, sir. You, 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 you watch for your diet. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been watching that a lot. As a matter of fact, I can't hardly really see anything around. I'm sorry, around. what was your name again? Sarah, Sarah. Nebaker. Okay, thank you. And you are the... I'm, uh, well, I am... You've got a lot of roles, I have a feeling. I am the commissioner for this district. Okay. And District 2. And right now, I am the chair. Of the district? Uh, of the of county the, commission. Of the county, county commission. commission. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yay, thank you for coming. And I'd like to know your names. Yes, hold on just a second. I'm Mary Chemist. And, and can you tell me where you live? I live in Seaside. Um, a native. What else? No, it's, I just wondered how to say that. Okay. I'm Diane Hines. 40 years on Smith Lake. You look familiar to yeah, me. Yeah, I, I, I knew your husband. Oh, okay. Part of that art community. Oh, that's why. Oh, good. I'm Maria Pinsetich. Um In fact, you and I, I yes, you've heard I, of me. I, I <laughs> have certainly heard of you. We have very dear friends. Yes, we do in common. That's true. So That's what awesome. we're, and Mary's my cousin. So she's, <laughs> yeah, so it's, we, we don't go far. Anyway, yes. Well, uh, I'm really glad to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Uh, your name was familiar, and that's why I asked you to introduce yourself. Anyway. <laughs> I'm Robert Strickland. And I walk here from about 300 feet away. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, uh, I have a dreadful amount of institutional memory, so I make a little interruption, uh, just r remembering the process since the 70s. Uh, and so I, I have kind of a passionate interest in how things get the way they are, and, you know, because it's not accidental that the uh, Planning Commission is the Citizen Advisory Committee, because that's basically because powers that be didn't want the citizens advisor, the bigger citizens advisory committee that previously existed uh, that was much larger than the planning commission and that's how I got into planning the county I was appointed to the uh, Clatsop County Conference of Plans Citizens Involvement Committee the CIC uh, and have your own television yeah we you know and I, and I, I don't remember how many of the people there were but it 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 met and it was effectively eliminated because who the hell needs that much planning? <laughs> Can we eliminate. John knows this. Okay. Anyway, I, I, that's I'm, I'm here and I'm glad to see people who've gone away and now realize this is home and guard our pretty piece of the world. I'm uh, Stuart Emmons. Um, I moved to the coast in 1976, and uh, one of my first uh, places to live was behind Fenton's Garden Center um, on Classic Plains. So I have, uh, I went away for 40 years, and I just moved back. I uh, went to college for planning and architecture, had my own firm in Portland. And um, I've been coming to the coast every week for years now. Um, Clatsop Plains is a very special place for me, as is Tansy Point, and um, I, uh, I want to see the soul of this area uh, kept. Uh, I, uh, I know there are a lot of pressures for growth and whatever. We have to balance uh, balance that with the, this beautiful place. Uh, Stewart is soft spoken, and when he says he went to school and studied architecture, uh, he happened to go to Harvard. And he happened to have been, have run for the Portland City Council and was absolutely clobbered by some better known person. Uh, but, uh, well, lovely of you to bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather be here. <laughs> so, so if we could move on, because we are yeah, sorry. on a schedule. So, what is the question? The who question who are you, John Dunser? John Bernard Hermes Dunser. Been here 15 years. Most miserable 15 years of my <laughs> life. I, uh, I love this area. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. People and I obviously have different <coughs> goals and aspirations. Uh, and I've run for 
office 16 times and been last 16 times, several times, Sarah. And uh, i very good technically, uh, have been on many service organizations, been retired for 45 years. Uh, came out of an engineering background, management background, CEO of Fortune 500 company, uh, been on many planning boards, ran for Congress back in Southern California. And uh, I've had a miserable experience in this community as far as citizen involvement goes. And that's why I'm here is because I feel so strongly about citizen goal one, citizen involvement, because I think it is absolutely stomped on here in this particular county. Welcome, John. Okay, thank you. Hello, okay. Pat. But other than that, I have no, nothing else to say. <laughs> Welcome. And the woman who just walked in, that's Commissioner Pam Webb. She's also one of the uh, five commissioners on the board. On the board. So. How often does the commission meet? Well, officially twice a month, but okay. we have other meetings. Okay. Yeah, it's typically the second and the fourth Wednesday of the month at 6 p.m. So they had a meeting last night. The next one is uh, the 24th. In Astoria, I'm assuming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're the opening Boynton up. Building. The in the, at the Boynton Building. Thank you. Okay. Um, I live in Cecil. Yeah. And I'm going to have you introduce yourselves because you're up next on the agenda for our, our uh, presentation. All right. Uh, Chinook Customs always uh, speakers are to stand. I don't know what your customs are, but I have to do what protocol dictates. Well, I appreciate that. No, I do. Yeah. Okay. This is my wife, Jody Abing, A-B-I-N-G, formerly Sotel. Her lineage goes back to Chief Concounty. And it's on the papers. There's no disputing it. Uh, Concounty, for those who don't, married many different princesses from the five tribes that make up the Klaza, or excuse me, make up the Chinook Indian Nation. They are Gulapa to the north, Lower Chinook uh, to the Awako, Willakut, and uh, Middle Village. Then south here is the Klaza, and then we have the Wakayakum and the Kathlamet, uh, all belonging to the Chinook Nation. So uh, we are from, or she's from Wakayakum, I am. Clats up, but we are uh, born and raised here. So, true natives. True. Um, yeah. What? Was Conley's daughter called he, he had several daughters. Yeah. One, one married Ronald, uh, one yeah. married a bandit, gave birth to Ronald McDonald. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking of our Colby Lake named after, you know, just down, down this road. Mm -hmm. And after one of his daughters, I think. Yeah. Um, There's one. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't mean, if you have something to add, go ahead. Well, there's a wonderful, uh, in one of the old um, uh, county um, historical society, there's a, a publication. Uh, there's a wonderful article about the Cullaby name, and uh, I can bring it yeah. to you at yeah. the next meeting. In, in some touch. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I have, uh, so, and then our service dogs, uh, I have to s s introduce him. He's uh, Cisco. Cisco. <laughs> yeah, he keeps her alive. He's got allergies right now. Poor <laughs> Cisco. Um, a little bit about myself. I, uh, I'm a resident here of Clatsop County, born in according to the records in Astoria, and um, was gainfully employed in the fishing industry through uh, Han, not Han, excuse me, um, Elmore Cannery, Bam, Bumblebee Seafoods, and uh, a lot of my uncles who have long passed worked there. And there I got to know uh, Chinook people through the uh, passage of World War II and 
then stayed within the community, traveled a little bit, but uh, by a long time gainful employment after 11 years in the fishing industry was with the Clatsop County Sheriff's Department. There for 24 days, uh, nine months, excuse me, nine months, 20 days, nine hours before I was gravely um, injured and then dismissed by disability. Um, and the, historically the only non-white, presently the only non-white um, who first was uh, first gained employment with the class of county sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether Chief, uh, excuse me, Sheriff Bondetti decided to follow the federal dictum of uh, integration or whatever, but there it is. Um, prior to that, I had some service with the historic police department as a reserve sergeant for nine years. But, uh, so we're familiarly intimate with Clatsop County. And I know you know recently the news about our reacquisition of the remains of Tansy Point. Uh, what many of you don't know, I'm sure, I could be wrong, but correct me if I am, that every, at, in 1851, every living adult and woman and uh, child and young adults from the five nations that I, or five tribes that I described that belonged to the Chinook Nation, uh, attended the Anson Dart hearings or proceedings at a place called Tansy Point, Northwest 13th Street and Warrington Drive, I guess it's now called today. And um, on those treaty grounds was a small village that multiplied, and it was uh, a smooth rolling uh, plains area that allowed for uh, the accommodation of all those people. But a lot of people don't realize that um, from where Tansy Point is going west along the landline were three other village sites including what they call now Hammond and some other thing. Anyway, <laughs> those those village sites were important fishing sites or resource gathering sites for the people of the Klatsa Plains. And the people of the Klatsa Plains are near and dear to our um, present uh, Chinookan Council chairman and his wife. Uh, their names uh, Tony Johnson and his wife's name Michelle Johnson. Their heritage and lineage goes to the village sites that no longer exist on the rolling hills of the Clatsop Plains. And our chairman asked me to point out uh, a significant cultural information that I know you don't know. And I need to digress a little bit and thank this person named Gail. I, have no, I don't remember your last name, but for being inclusive when in this society that isn't necessarily the truth with indigenous people working with their Euro American communities that surround them. Anyway, this cultural message is uh, an old one that goes back. I don't know when, I'll be honest with you. It's a very, very old one. It's a creation story, so it's going to be placed in the term that you guys will understand, not the supernatural stuff, but it, we use uh, animals, plants, and trees to distinguish location, time, variances, all these other things that are, are needed to make the message come across. We revere the, the spirit coyote in our um, messages, in our, in our speakings of uh, creation, as well as Saddle Mountain. But that's another story, and you'd have to pay me to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So Coyote, in his search for a, have, have a, a bit, place to, for humans to habitat, habitate, um, was out in the ocean and subjected to many storms, tossed and turned, and came to the mouth of the Columbia, was washed ashore by one of these big storms, and landed in the hills above here in a large uh, spruce tree. And he looked about him and saw that there was lots of, excuse me, lots of sand. And he reached down to grab that sand. And he forced the sand against the ocean and therefore created these mild sand kind of hills. Not dunes, but more like hills. Smooth, undulating hills. And that prevented the ocean from consuming him. And then he bequeathed this land that, to say that it is now ha habitable for the humans. And in doing so, it implied that the, sand, the land of the Klatsa Plains would be sacred forever. And in his trials, uh, travels um, and preparation for other sites up the Columbia River, he always um, lamented leaving this sacred land but praised the fact that it would be taken care of by the people that would be coming after him. That being the people of the Chinook Nation. And our, our chairman laments the fact that um, so much of the smooth hills have, have gone to development, irre irreversible development. And the concern for the Chinook Nation is to preserve as much of that heritage that is a uh, uh, central point of our Klatsa Chinook history, my wife's history, my history, and go forward looking to be more inclusive in dealing with the remains of this, of the plains. We have to call it what it is, it's the remains. And um, so we don't look at the development the same way as you people would look at development. It, 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 there's no, um, in the Chinookawawa language, and it's extensive. There's no word for development. Um, there's no word for pollution, because uh, we, we're not a people of uh, plastics, oil, fossil fuel, you know, those kinds of things that change, dramatically change the climate. And we are very concerned about climate change. Actually, we call it climate crisis. Right now, our chairman and his wife uh, work at Shoal Water Reservation. They're uh, brothers and sisters related to us through Chinook uh, blood. And at Shoal Water, they, in Washington, are addressing what they can do for surviving the inevitable, which will be the tsunami that is to come. Our records, we, our people survived one many years ago. And the stories of those climatic events were horrific. <clears throat> survived it, we did, and now we face another one. This time we have guests that will join us in this 
epic disaster that is to come. And it's forecasted and related in Chinookan history, past, present, and future. So when I, it is not a new concept that this is going to happen. A lot of people don't accept that it's going to happen. We accept it now because it happened to us. And um, Chairman Johnson just wants to uh, relay that it is important that the Chinook, uh, you want to call it question, but the Chinook involvement must be included in all discussions concerning the future, present and future conditions of our rolling hills here in the Clydeso Plains. And uh, we intend to expand our footprint that we so richly deserve. Just to remind you that in 1851, our ancestors faithfully signed over, begrudgingly, a lot, a lot. We gave up so much so that there would be room for the visitors to come in and live amongst us and thought respectfully of that treaty. Our ancestors signed that with their blood and sweat and tears. It went to a Congress, it went to a public, it went to a government that did not honor that, did not ratify that, and to this day 168 years soon to be, it is still an unjust treatment of the native people, our people here on these lands. People can come in and dismiss us if they want, that's their choosing. We choose not to be dismissed. We choose not to be ignored. We choose not to be third grade, second grade, class, whatever people. We we're here first, responsible caretakers and stewards of the fisheries and forests. No, we were not proponents of clear cutting. We didn't, like the Oregon forests practices people claim that we are. We, there is no history of us ransacking hillsides and allowing all that to destroy the stream beds of our fish resources. What we do want to do is reclaim our fishery resources, not just for the benefit of our people, but for the benefit of our neighbors, you people. That's what we want to do. Like at Tansy Point, on an 1851, 52, and 53 map, it clearly shows Tansy Point Creek flowed into the Columbia River at the Skeeper Non one call it Skippernon, it's Skippernon mm -hmm. River. And the village site there had hundreds of people that, that lived off the Coho and chum salmon that flowed into this creek you call Culliby here, that goes up in here. That was full of salmon all the way up into the foothills to the south. And now it's, what is that when Johnson said it was a uh, drainage ditch or something like that. Well, we want to connect our Tansy Creek to uh, the village in that village site that produced salmon, uh, coho, and chump salmon for the pe our ancestors that lived there. And we know that it's viable because it's being done in Pacific County and places around Oregon, maybe not here in Akatsa, unfortunately. But We've seen other interactions, and some even involving people like the Grand Ron and, our, and some of our cousins to the west, uh, east at uh, the reservation, that is the Warm Springs. Yes. Um, Could I ask something? Yes. For a minute. So, um, the Neocoxy. Yes. Or what's called, maybe there's another name for it, was Nickox. 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 You can spit that. Yeah, spit that. Yeah, you can 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 spit that.
so, um, so that was a, a major route, water route, mm -hmm. that's not contiguous now from, uh, I guess, what we call Little Beach up to, to go to the Columbia. It um, went, no, it went into uh, the southern portion of, uh, what do you call, Warnington. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course, you, it started off about... See, there, Right at this intersection. The maps of 18, started 51, right here. 52, oh. and 53 show a lake chain in there. Oh, interesting. So that you brought that up. There is a resource that we, as, uh, are sad to say, it was what uh, one resource that really kept the uh, individuals and the camps and the, and the houses of the Clotsops uh, intact was Wapato. You won't find that here anymore because the development that took place shortly after the passing of the last clots off, uh, destroyed this chain. It was actually a chain of lakes and streams that went from uh, where the outlet is in uh, Mechanicum. Mm -hmm. And it goes all the way up to uh, Port Stevens area. That's what I was saying. Yeah, that was all a waterway. And well, it was interconnected lakes. Right, and uh, the freshwater lakes there were uh, places that harvested the Wapato, which is a staple uh, uh, root uh, that uh, kept the Indians, kept the Chinook. The, the Chinook geese on the Camp Riley Parade Ground delineate the Neocoxie Creek. You know, so when they talked about uh, improving the wetlands and so on, uh, no, they needed the parade ground. Uh, you know, but it, it horseshoed, it blew us apart days, it flowed right here, went north, horseshoed through Camp Rylea, through the parade ground, through Sunset Lake, down to Neowan Estuary. The, 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 the development and then the uh, allowance of uh, lakes to dry up there at uh, Smith Lake area. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, those were pro prominent areas for harvesting uh, roots that kept the continents from what we call now Hammond all the way to Tansy, oh, actually all the way to Ski Bernard and uh, Ski Bernard mm -hmm. and, uh, and when you cross the bridge across the uh, new highway bridge into Warrington to have the development on the site, the airport. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there you at low water you'll see a, a, a slew kind of thing that goes through there. Well, there were several more than just that one, and that's where the white sturgeon would spawn, and that's where the white sturgeon were harvested by the people that were living on these plains. Back behind more and those field. were the same white sturgeon that were harvested, not only harvested, but processed and traded as far east as the Nez Pierce people, our cousins to the east. We traded our fish, which is bountiful in fat content, protein, for the elk and bear from the Rockies, or the Wallawas, because their uh, meat was more uh, high protein value than the elk and deer here. The uh, short antlers always raining. It was tough for them to make a go of it. Climate has changed now. We have lots of elk, but they're still displaced by the development. Most notably the one in Warrington. And that that elk herd there was the per, per historical provider for the North uh, Plains, North Clatsa Plains people. And then there's two that are historically still viable for the people in the uh, seaside area that um, was a Clatsa uh, Chinook and Cabin. Seaside was at Gear could I add something? So I live in Gearhart and I watched the elk 
flourish there in the dunes. And I know some people feel that they're pests. Um, I feel good that they have a place because, as you say, they have been displaced by a lot. And I also feel good because I was part of preserving those dunes from development many years ago. I must. And that's, that's what can be done. I will send that, uh, your Sarah Niebecker, mm -hmm. I will send that information to our council. The expression, how you must is thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. No, it's very high thank you. Even the deer are going down the main street yes. of Astoria. Yeah. You know, and they're bringing their babies. Yeah. And it's, it's scary yes. because they could get hit. All kinds of things can happen. But they go up to Pleasant and then they come down to get water by the turnaround. And one day we were coming home and this guy accidentally hit a deer. It was a young one. And I got out of the car and stopped people from going around that corner but go on the outside. But it, it's like no help because if the protection of the animals comes, they just put it down. They, they don't try to heal them. Thank God he it had enough time to get itself together and it actually got up and went back to the herd. So just to show you how sad it, it has been for, uh, for us, it's almost a daily witnessing it, but when Tony and his family come over to shop, they, they lament about this. It, it's kind of humorous to the, but those people who are in the development programs. Uh, there was a concern, I don't know which department it was in the state of Oregon, about a possible uh, drainage waterway kind of thing that was in front of the Kia uh, car dealership, uh, Freak Meyer, and all that. It, well, it does, or there was a, a substantial waterway that went all the way to uh, uh, yeah, up, Upper Skip, uh, Upper Skipping on at one time, but that was all covered up and developed, and, and that was a uh, the remnants of it is a tidal spot that's there on Marlin Avenue, I think it is. Yeah. And you can see water on this side and behind right Aid. Well, that's the remnants of it, and it's it's sad that. Thousands of white sturgeon went there to spawn. Mm -hmm. They don't, uh, right now they're relegated, the sturgeon problem is relegated to them spawning in the, in the main stem and what, what little spawn in the John Day. But uh, if the most extensive use of the sturgeon was always in the estuaries. The village sites were always so, uh, near these, these spawning sites and on the maps they cooperate. So you can see the perilness of the situation when we uh, encroach more on wetlands, encroach more on the estuaries, and the changing atmosphere of our rolling hills, small rolling hills and the clots and plains. So I'm really appreciating your talk. I've taken quite a few notes. I just wanted to let you know that if there's anything more that you want to say or if you want to summarize, we have about five more minutes. Oh, just that we, we have to have some assurance that the Chinook will be inclusive in all these discussions about the present and future uh, good or transgressions that will take place. Mm -hmm. well, oh, could you Tony, come? Tony said to say he was sorry because he couldn't um, but he's in the process of transferring to a new job, but he's still in his old job that has to do with children, and he had responsibilities. He's a director of there. cultural education at the Shoalwater mm -hmm. and linguistic studies at the Shoalwater. Mm -hmm. His last day. Uh, so can we uh, 
Well, I guess I'll just respectfully invite a representative from the uh, Chinook Nation to uh, come. Either yeah, you should, you should keep it an open invitation because oh, any oh, of our yes, council yes. members would probably, not just ourselves, we yes. are members of the Chinook Cultural Committee. Okay. And uh, that's one of the most important committees that we have going now. But our nine council members, any one of them would uh, want to uh, express their concerns. I or desires. I appreciate that, and I'm looking forward to having a representative, whoever you decide to want, want to say. I, I don't mean or sound to be contentious. Oh, no, no. It just goes because of my past upbringing. I and truly so appreciate cool. your being here today. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I just have one question. Um, is it best to send our agendas to you every month, or is there a better contact person, or is someone else in addition to you that you sign Yeah. Uh, we have an office. I was there a couple of weeks ago. You were I center. went to base center. It was <laughs> It's all there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Louis Anderson, L E Y, is secretary. L E W E Y. If you contact her with her she will make sure that yeah, not only is she will always have somebody to sure get the information. So yeah, yeah. that person yeah. can get that same information. Yeah. So, is, so there's Someone no way of formally including it. However, we uh, because these are always open meetings. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Could we ask the question? So, um, Mr. I sir. Oh, Excuse me, sir. Uh, have I? A -B -I -N -G. I'm sorry. So um, I just was going to suggest that we um, approach the board of directors to see if we could open up one more chair to have someone, a representative from the Chinook Nation, be a part of that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I um, didn't mean to in uh, interrupt. So we were, I've just asked the question, if it's possible, if we could open up one more chair on this committee uh -huh. for someone from the Chinook Nation to well, I'm purchase. I'm sure that the council would definitely agree to that because they have much more to say than I can possibly say. For just the same as you do. They didn't live in the right place. So they, if there's a, if there's a Chinook are, council but, member who lives just... Well, then uh, well, let's, let's investigate that. Because so, okay. yeah. that would be very valuable. I gave her... It's worth the, the closest. Yeah. Okay, and where are you? We're in Astoria. So. Okay. Yeah. And everybody else is in Washington okay. or Seattle. Or so if, if uh, you know, according to the regulations, we cannot uh, open up a, a place here on this committee, I strongly urge that somebody come each time. The, the person who appoints. Hold on, let me finish. Yep. I strongly urge that uh, a representative come from the public at least. Okay. So that, yeah, because we definitely. I think we have a procedural process. problem, but yeah. we don't want that to limit the participation. Yeah. So we just, I, I think what we're both yeah. saying, all of us are saying, is that we, we're very hungry for your participation. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if there's constraints that we have because of some geography. Yes. So we just want to make sure that. The individual, the sole individual in the county with the power to appoint is. Ms. Nebaker. Well, then there we go. Okay, cleaned up. Well, is my number <laughs> out there? Um, Jody, yes. Okay. We'll approach the board. He looks at the numbers and he goes, I don't know. Click. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no one ever does that. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you yes. for allowing us to share a little bit. Yeah, well, I hope it's the first stage of May. <laughs> and as you go out, I will trail after you and just give you a... And I want to thank Robert for uh, okay. chiming in at the last minute to get us here because, of course, Tony Johnson would be here, but obviously his schedule dictated he had to be with the chair. Well, you're, you're an awfully good second string. <laughs> yeah, you're pretty good. Yes. Yeah. Do you know how close it was? He told me this morning that we had a meeting. Oh. I said, Bear. <laughs> When? Yeah. It was, oh, today at 2. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you.
thank you very much. Um, uh, if there's uh, no other further discussion, we'll move on to um, discussion about the strengths and weaknesses of the county's current citizen involvement activities. And Neil, I'm going to turn it over to you. Because I'm not exactly sure what we're supposed to be doing here. Turn it over. So last month, um, as part of your packet information that we handed out, there was a worksheet that had the statewide goals, the county goals for goal one and policies. And uh, your homework assignment was to go through the statewide goal and the county goal and complete the worksheet as to whether or not the goals are still relative or relevant. Um, should they be updated? Should they be removed? Should they be kept as is? And what new goals do we need to add? So in the, in the background report, we did talk a little bit uh, about changing and how that's never been incorporated or addressed in the plan. But again, also, how do we reach out to populations and citizen groups that are normally not part of the process? And so that was part of the reason that we had the representative here today speak. So really what I'm looking for is A, did you do your homework? And if so, I'm going to collect them. I will not grade them, but I will collect them. Uh, but then it's really for you to have a discussion as a committee about what you see as a strength and weaknesses and what we need to add, what we need to change, um, and what we have as staff maybe even thought about that needs to be included. So um, I, can I ask a few preliminary questions before we get to this specifically? I, in reading the material, I, and perhaps it's because I don't live locally. I acknowledge that's my own failing. Um, but so one of the things, so, so just tactically, the CCI or the Committee of Citizen Involvement, we have one, correct? Yes, that's the Planning Commission. Oh, that's the Planning Commission at the county level. Okay, that wasn't clear. Okay. Um, then the next question is the CIAC, the Committee of. I believe that's the state committee. Is that the state committee? Yeah, for citizen involvement. Okay, that's the state one. Okay. So then, okay, thank you. Then, my next thing is a, it's a little bit of a soapbox. Um, it's about, uh, so I've been, we have been very involved in the, uh, in, in some of the, uh, planning that's gone on at Seaside. And, and one of the things that keeps coming up is that uh, you can't get involvement, uh, or you get involvement, it's often too late to be uh, valuable or in, uh, included in the decision-making pro process. And, all, and that flows back to the issue of notification and how notification is defined and the parameters and the... Um, description of, of who gets to be notified. And so my understanding currently, um, and it talked about this in the, the book or the reading that you gave us, was uh, it's 100 feet, or in Salem uses 250 feet uh, from the site. The problem with that, as I think I mentioned previously, is that if you have a road that you're covering, and if it's any, a, a normal size city road, the 100, by the, depending on where you start the the marker on the site and going 100 feet, you might not even get past the road. So therefore, no one is notified. Or if you're lucky, there's just a couple of people that are notified. So I guess in a broader, bigger, what this committee is going to be doing, can we talk about changing that? Because logically speaking, it makes no sense to have 100 feet. But it does say in the materials that we were given mm -hmm. that that is a minimum. Correct. And so, yes, can be a, yes you know, exactly the looking, point. Then when they're looking at uh, sending notifications, you can look at specific, and if, if 100 feet only uh, gets you to the road, they can say, no, we need to send it out farther. So, Correct. So in, in asking this question to a number of planners, the response that I have typically gotten was, we're going by what it says in the book. You know, the it's like the checklist. How far do we have to go? 100 feet. There we go. Not logically speaking, are we actually going far enough to notify someone? So. So because I know where you live. Yes, you do. And <laughs> you you would be uh, very far from the road. 
Yeah, well, the hope is that if it crosses the property line, I'm still counted. But even then, because of the weird sort of intersection that is in front of, I, I don't get notified. My neighbor, who thankfully I'm ta I talk to all the time, gets notified. And we then spread the word like wildfire. But so, so one big topic I wanted to have the discussion about was notification. Because you can't get people involved I met this lovely gentleman in, in, in Safeway. Yes, you. Do you remember when we met? I do. I it do. was in Safeway. Blazed into my memory. Waiting to buy some sliced meat. So, and I said, hey. Because I'll talk to you. One of my best deals. I love it. Yeah, and you tried to get my daughter to buy root beer, but that's another issue. Oh. Um, <laughs> but I was I knew I wouldn't do it right. Tr <laughs> trying to get everyone to, to be interested in what was going on with the Urban Growth Boundary. And literally, anyone who st stood near me and stood there for more than 15 seconds I would talk to. But that's unusual. And the idea is to be able to try and get more people involved and understand. So that's the one piece is the notification. The second piece is boiling down the issues in a, it talked about having it at a 10th grade level or whatever, right. having it in a succinct sort of what is it? Because often these issues are pretty complicated, and they've got many parts, and it's not easy, and it's subtleties of one portion of another. So I guess that's another piece of it that I feel like if we're going to really have citizen involvement, we're going to have to be able to have a more educated citizenry. Oh. And I thank you very much is my point. That's another component of in the involvement, though. So, okay. End of subject. So, um, at the rural levels, because you were talking about in town, so in, in the rural levels, our code actually is a little bit different. Um, and still we have that same issue with how far out do we go. Totally get it. So, um, in the rural communities, and by that, I'm really being specific here, I'm going to use jargon and I apologize. No, bring it. But in the rural communities, such as Miles Crossing, mm -hmm. and Park, that's mm -hmm. a rural community. Yep. has a very specific type of zoning. Arch Cape has a very specific type of zoning. Mm -hmm. uh, Westport, um, Napa, and Swenson, in these little concentrations yep. of area, the notification area is 250 feet. Right. And the reason it has to do kind of with the lot size. So in the rural lands areas, that's another piece of jargon for you, that's the RA1, the RA2, yep. the RA5 zoning, again, 250 feet. When we get to the resource zones, the EFU, the F80, um, and the AF, so that's exclusive farm use, forestry, 80 acre minimum, and AF is just the agriculture. I'm on the border of it. That's my issue. Right. That's a 750 foot um, notification level. So one thing that we've started doing, and this has just been in the last couple of years, and I hope it's helped, but we're you know, we're looking for we're looking for ways to make it work. But one of the things that we started doing was. Um, having applicants when they are having conditional uses or certain types of uses that are um, something that is a type 2 or above. So that's a, not an administrative decision. If you're in the RA1 zone... So a quasi-judicial kind of idea? Well, yeah. So if you're in the RA1 zone and you want to build a house, that's administrative. We could do that over the counter. We don't need to send notification. Yeah. But if you want, um, let's say you're in um, the um, EFU zone and you want to open a campground, mm -hmm. that's a conditional use. And yeah. so all of a sudden... That's got a lot more impact, and that's not just an administrative decision. That requires a lot more thought. One of the things we've started doing is requiring that the applicants hold a neighborhood meeting. That's and we, no, I guess, thank you. Bye. Um, one of the things that we do is establish the public zone where we tell them, here is your mailing list, and this is this actually is decided by the director what size that buffer zone should be. Um, so somebody wanted to put a, an asphalt batch plant into um, a little area in Napa, and so the buffer zone, I think you determined, was 1,000 feet in an area where the, the tax lots are really small. Mm -hmm. That drew more people, right. obviously. So they needed to do a neighborhood meeting, yeah. which um, is a place for them to go and explain to the neighbors what they want to plan to do, how they plan to do it, and then get feedback from the neighbors about their concerns and, and you know, just whatever the neighbors want to tell them. Uh, and that sometimes informs their decisions 
and it informs their application, and they have to take things into account. A staff person usually hits these meetings. We usually try and go. Um, sometimes we have a Saturday or Monday or whatever, we try and go. Uh, and so that informs the application that comes to us, and it also tells us what's what's going on in the neighborhood and what people's oh, interests are. Well, so that has helped in a couple of cases. The, um, and it kind of gets it onto other people's radar because it's larger. We also have the county website, so that people know that they can look at the county website. Uh, that's the type twos and type threes, yeah. those sorts of things, the type two A's. So that's going on. So that's helped a little bit. Then the other thing we do is if we have something where we're going to have a hearing on a property, we have the applicant post the property, and we have these, they can look like little real estate signs, they have mm -hmm. brackets mm -hmm. that says this property is the subject of a public hearing, mm -hmm. and that needs to go up the same day the public notice goes out from mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. So no, that makes those sense. are things that we've no, done. I told it, the, so if you think some, something else. Oh, yeah, no. So, oh, <laughs> awesome, because yes. Um, First off, and I appreciate that it's all online, but man, you have to have a master's in in figuring out planning or something. And I'm good at this, and I can't find it. On the website. On the, oh my goodness, the level of frustration I have with your website is very high. It might be in there with mine. Yeah, because <laughs> probably yours is high. So I guess... Probably not. It's, I know how to use it, but it's... Uh, it's great if you know, even for... To, to sign up for this, the only way I knew to yes. sign up for this was it got sent to me. I couldn't even find it on. I tried to. It wasn't clear to me what it was. Yes, for sport, I tried to find it on my own. Five minutes later, I still couldn't find it, and I thought, you know what? God is telling me to be on this committee. <laughs> but, but in, in all seriousness, it is so. It, yes, information is available to the select few who can find it. So I appreciate that what you're doing, but maybe we talk about some more, you know, back up the truck a little bit and talk about how to get infer like basic stuff to people. And I don't know how to do that. I, I don't. I haven't gone that far yet. But if we can't find it, then what, one one of the things I agree with you. But one of the things, sure, the complete website redevelopment that's not going to happen. And if it's going to be terribly confusing and nobody can find anything because that's not just the way websites are. In the information that goes out, as an example, when uh, we were, uh, we found out about signing up for this committee, uh, instead of go to the website and sign up, it would be go to the website and here's the address. So in all publications coming, going out to people, asking for them to give input or notification, Give them an exact address of where it is. A link. A link. <coughs> and I, I'm sure that you know this, and maybe everybody else knows this, and I know that the web addresses are like this long. You can rename those to something that says, give your input now, and it'll take them to this big, long website. That's an easy thing to do. But that, I think, would help with citizen involvement because it's not such a challenge. It's more of an Amazon experience. Click, there you are. With our um, promotional literature we're putting out for the comp plan update, like the goal two, we've been putting the web address and the Facebook thing on there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. We've got it. Notification. I, I appreciate what you're doing at the county, but I guess maybe that's the difference between the county and the city, that you, there's not concordance there. Maybe part of the other issue. Yeah, we can't help the city. No, no, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. But you could clarify the relationship between the counties and the cities, because that's not, we want to, I'm like six feet on the south side. Of you're on the other side? Yes, yeah. okay. We have the uh, same yeah, problem. On the other, yeah, other, other end. So mm -hmm. the incorporated areas are just that. They are their own.
citizen with each of the five cities' components around the county. And so um, we actually notified and sent the agendas to the planning directors for Orange and Gearhart and um, so City, Seaside. <laughs> and and uh, I put Canada Beach with Southwest because oh, okay. it's kind of outside of the plaza planning area. But um, yeah, but you see that none of them were able to come or cho chose not to come today. I don't know what their schedules are. But, uh, but we do have to be consistent. And so as part of our process as we do this, we're sending notices to the cities, maybe not necessarily the property owners in the city, but to the city, at least the planning directors. So that is possibly where the breakdown occurs then? Mm -hmm. um, there's probably communication could be much better. I'm just saying the translation of information from the county to the city does that perhaps not always flow down to the citizen. Yeah, is, I think it's really unclear to people who live in the incorporated areas. Yeah. Is there versus the unincorporated areas? What? Uh, who is driving the? Um, the yeah. 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 Well, the evolution, of the, the development choices, and as I said, when you're right on the border, the choices in, that are made by the city. You, you, right. The, the, well, the irony is that you can't vote for anything that's happening yeah, to you. I can't vote for the school board. Or no, the right, exactly. The, <laughs> no, yeah. we're outside of anything. Yeah, we, so we're tech, we don't have a voice in what is happening to us. Yeah, except at the county. Except at the county. What's that? You're in the school district. No, I am not. In the school district? Yeah. Yes. That's the school board. Yeah, no, you yes. don't get you know, to vote for it. I don't get to vote yeah. for anybody, though. I don't. Of course you do. Sure, you do. Yeah. I, I think you do. I, I don't live here. Oh, I live here. I'm, I'm a property owner. Oh, well, that's okay. Fine. Oh, I know that. So, that's so sorry. everything I said now is no longer. No, no, it, no. It, it, no we understand. But, 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 but you, you see that? What I'm, I'm just trying to use this as an example. So, um, perhaps streamlining the communication would be beneficial to the city as well, because then they don't have to r repeat or replicate any effort if the county's already making notification or dispersing information or whatever, and streamlining, streamlining that might be helpful. There are ways that the county actually has wonderful powers to improve the environment within the city of Warrington when the county is actually a property owner. And, yes. and, and, and yeah. you, but usually their attitude has been, oh no, it's not our place to... Uh, well, we just sold that yesterday. Yeah, we are, or, 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 or we, yeah. all, all our job is to do is hand it over to the developer to clear cut it and strip it and do whatever they want with it. Yeah. But but they have the power, you know, like there are very prime pieces along the skipping on that the county owns. And the, and the fear is they'll say, well, we don't really need this piece, let's just hand it off to Warrington. Yeah, yeah, you know, well, it, that's that actually a bigger issue is, the, yeah. is, is who owns it. And, and where does that responsibility end? Or where is it considered like, oh, I passed it off, it's on your plate now? Yeah, that, that all does tie into um, citizen involvement and the frustrations that citizens have with the, um, with the process, it seems. I'm sorry. Um, that exclude, to exclude. Um, I, I wouldn't have voted for um, annexing the, where the... Um, Costco at all are, if, if anybody, and living in the county, if anybody had asked me if that property should have been sold to the city of Warrington, I would have objected. And now I have um, Elk as my nearest neighbors because they don't have a place to live. <laughs> of course, I, I drove into my driveway last night to have two teenagers with big racks to stand in <laughs> Elks, I mean. <laughs> uh, that was well put, but um, <laughs> um, they, you know, they. I love having them. They're very good neighbors. They're much better neighbors than the actual human ones. Yeah. That, you know. they're, they're a little quieter. But um, I, it, it, as far as this piece is concerned, I was um, <laughs> kind of flummoxed as I went along that the goals and the policies don't necessarily um, that the policies don't necessarily support the goals. Especially in like the yeah. um, to so, to assure effective two-way communication. Yeah. yeah. So do you think we're not our our county policies are not consistent with the statewide? I think that they that the that the goals are consistent, but that, that the policies don't necessarily reflect um, 
support for the goals? And, and how, what would you recommend as changes to fix that? Well, a little bit less institutional language would be helpful in terms yeah. of, um, of just encouraging citizen involvement because this is, um, you know, if I'm trying to decide whether or not to be involved and I read the just, I can just take a sentence out of any one of these. I, I didn't know I was turning it in, but one of my comments was it was drafted by a non-native speaker of English. <laughs> <laughs> well, <coughs> I think or a lawyer. By a, yeah, oh. by, a, <laughs> by a two natives, by, a, by an English speaker who's... Anyway, I don't think that... The, I think that we... Um, designing the policies to be more specifically... Um, addressing the goals would be Helpful. useful in all of the, in really all of the um, goals. So where we haven't met the goals, I don't know if it's because the policy isn't, it's kind of begs the question of what the goal is. On, on the recommendations column under staff, there are currently no planning commission members representing the LC Jewel or Seaside Rural Planning Area. Uh, there's an attitude element embedded there that instead of the word representing, uh, I would switch that to who reside in. I think every planning commission member uh, represents the entire county. They, they aren't simply, it isn't a, a ward arrangement like, like you know, Sarah gets the second, you know, when the county reacted to not wanting the power to be in the population centers, but wanted to have these separately elected places, that didn't happen to the planning commission. You know, every planning commission is as concerned about Elsie Jewell as Southeast, whatever. Uh, so I, I, I just wish you'd cross out representing and insert who resides in. Uh, this, this isn't an actual policy. This was just my right, but, but it, 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 It's like when you the people who are so used to seeing it, and if they read it out loud or hesitated for five minutes, you know, I, I've seen that too many times over too long time that it's it ain't true. You know, it's, it's kind of like my, my thing about the planning commission is the citizen involvement committee. Well, there's a real purpose because. CCCP looked too much like Soviet planning, uh, you know, at, at one point. <laughs> and, 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 you know, so they really, there was a time you couldn't find the word planning anywhere on a county department. It was eliminated. Uh, you know, and if you recall in the 90s, Tom Carmichael era, you know, you had a roadmaster put in charge of what used to be planning. Uh, and the Citizen Advisory Committee was wiped out, and we will declare that our anti-planning planning commission is the Citizen Involvement Committee for the county. But it was not a consequence of being in support of planning. So let me ask a question of the committee. Um, what is the Like this, maybe not this, all, this exact group. Oh, we're not signing up for that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You'll be tired of us too, I guarantee that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 let's see who survives. Is there a need and a desire to keep a group alive? Why did they disband? Um, I think it was a voluntary, except for the Southwest. It was an ad hoc thing, and basically they had a specific task. When they were done, oh, they, they completed the task. And yeah, that was it. Uh, yeah. It, it was the only area where the county didn't do it for them back in the beginning. You know, so they had been left out of part of the planning process. So as a result, they needed a citizen advisory committee. You know, you know, the, the county. We, yeah, you know, the county basically had planned from north to south and ran out of ump by the time they they got down there. And, and, and that's why you needed someone to try and keep the process going. But, but it wasn't that they were, you know, they were kind of in the worst situation 
Uh, and, and, and then there got to be this grudge match of, yeah, okay. uh, why do they get one and we don't? Well, there was an answer for it. I would like to suggest that, yes, that there would be a continuation of some level of uh, committee that allows for, you know, people people coming in, uh, kind of, I guess, more open in that uh, constraints that may have prohibited some from participating would be removed that, but so that we have representation of voices from a number of different people and also perspectives. Anyone who cares about the area is welcome. Right. But yes, it would and be lovely. And the result of that hypothetical uh, committee would be to present input to the Planning Commission on topics of interest and concern to this advisory group. Is that what, is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Mm -hmm. that, exactly. Entirely the point that it, it's a, a broader sense. So it's not, the onus is not entirely on one group, but there's, I should say, a more grassroots sort of mm -hmm. uh, committee that is perhaps less formal. Welcoming. All of those, such that uh, it's a funnel for more information and data to be sent. So let me ask the commissioners, position. is there currently any group that sort of unofficially uh, brings issues to planning commission meetings? I have not been to the no. county uh, meetings. There's no group. There's individual. They, they were Gail yeah, was probably the best person yeah. to answer that question. Yeah, there, there is no. Uh, advisory committee to the planning commission, so to speak. So, um, and nobody, at least during the time I've been here, maybe one person has come to speak under public participation okay. about something not on the agenda. But the, um, the other so issue, on. though, for me, um, particularly because my district, for instance, has a very large rural area in it. And what district is that? I, I, it's district. I have, like, the center of Astoria okay. across Young's Bay. Uh -huh. and. Lewis and Clark. Lewis, okay. Lewis and Clark Got only. Walewski. So, so Walewski Loop. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, um, so for me, um, the fact that that we have a person who represents that area is very, very important to me. I mean, that's my go-to person for any issues there. I mean, mm -hmm. other than Gail, but, mm -hmm. but so I like that. I like that that, rep that area specific mm -hmm. because it helps me a lot. I mean, it helps me kind of get a, a feel for what's going on out there in terms of, of citizen input. Right. Um, and I, I think it's really important. I mean, I've been in two places, too many places in Oregon where I didn't think there was vigorous enough representation on the Planning Commission from specific areas. The, the curiosity is if your guy there made it explicit, he does not want any proactive planning. Period. You know, explicit. You know, he apologized, but he did not want any extra meetings. He's busy. You know, so it's it's a weird situation. Of, so we'll we'll address that. At, you yeah. know, as as terms because everybody that's sitting on the planning it. commission serves at your will. Well, actually. The, the planning the commission. Are you appointed to planning? Well, the planning commission isn't ad hoc, so that's yeah. different. No, so but, that's, but, but they serve at will. Right, so I think it's, I'm not sure, but I would guess it's the whole commission. Yes, she, she gets to appoint a lot of strange committees. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but all the planning commission serve at the mercy. Of, of the county commission as a whole. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't call it the mercy. They have ter they have terms. But they have but terms. it can be called so. off at any moment that you don't want the person, and and, and they can be replaced any moment you. you I, I do that else. Well, extraordinarily carefully. Well, and, and for for in interest of keeping us so we can leave sometime today, um, just going back to. If we have rep representation, so yes, individuals, but also inviting others, so that it's a con. So it also, I guess, I'm envisioning it. It can be a conversation and not simply this is our findings. Here you take it, but because I think where you learn things and where it becomes productive is where you talk about the reasoning behind it, and that may not be unless we're writing a book, uh, necessarily well represented Absolutely. in the report. And there are counties uh, that, that have actually area subcommittees of their planning commissions. 
Um, so that's something if you all think is a great idea that maybe we could pursue on an ongoing basis. I guess part of it, I, I, to be honest, speaking just personally, I don't think I understand the issue, the problem well enough to design the committee yet. Honestly. And, they, it, and, and I don't know that there is a problem. I think it's okay. more of a way to keep the community involved yeah. and not lose the momentum that you're going to get during this type of process. But, right. but to also give them something where they don't have to come to Vistoria every single time they want to speak, uh, but they can give input about what's happening in the planning area in their neighborhoods. And perhaps also that um, because these conversations may be occurring ad hoc, that that information could be shared you know, as it occurs to a committee that it then gets forwarded on and then it could either further investigation could be made or you know further insight or or, or maybe okay that's a, a one off and it doesn't require any further you you also have a representative as a county commissioner that you can talk to and then it that's absolutely true and I don't know a single soul who does that. Oh. Well, I, no, I'm, I'm saying, no, 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 but let me qualify what I mean by that. I completely agree with you. There is, and there's, I don't, and that, I don't want to recreate the wheel. My point is that a lot of the conversations I have are people who don't really understand all of this process, so they don't know who to go to. Most people don't. Exactly my point. So yes, there are those that are sophisticated enough that are writing to their Congress people and or local folks. But there, I would say, a vast majority that want to talk to somebody and like, oh, you did that thing, right? Can I tell you about this? Th th that's, I'm trying to, if we can capture some of that, because I think there's a lot of good nuggets in there. So I, I don't, I, again, I don't want to recreate the wheel. And, I, and telling them, we'll just write to your, you know, commissioner, I, I think is, we're missing the, we're missing the opportunity, well, so... You also have to consider if people really want to be involved. I mean, oh, yeah. Most people have better sense. <laughs> well, I think you can make I, involvement a little more um, palatable. Yeah. <laughs> easier. And easier to. Yeah. Two pieces of candy? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> minimum. <laughs> <laughs> we have minimum standards, yes. Did you notice it's gone? Yes. Mine's gone too. Yeah. Uh, it really is an important act. Feedback to the, um, to the interest is also important, and I, my own experience is that I haven't gotten much feedback when I expressed interest or concerns. So, I mean, I, I submitted my application for this committee, this Thank you. Um, advisory committee in uh, February. Mm -hmm. It's the closing. And I never heard a word until I heard from you in the end of April. Yes. Well, so, we closed it, then we reopened it because we didn't I know, have but you, you didn't ever, nobody ever said we received your application and this is what's happening. And I think if you want people to be engaged, you have to, like, engage them. And, uh, uh, oh, you uh, renegade. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm from the nonprofit world. Yeah, surely. I mean, <laughs> volunteer organization. No, but, but I think that... 30 years, I know how hard it is to, to make sure that everybody who expresses an interest hears something. But I also know that you're going to lose people if you, you know, I mean, I, I could have wandered off to South America long since um, for not hearing anything about an application that I made to a committee that I was really interested in participating in. So, so you have the staff and orders to be able to do something like that. That's or just a trickle system for the, when the application comes in on mine, just... Just a, oh, you mean like an auto reply? Yeah. Thing? Yeah. Think, the auto reply. Yeah. So, the, so you know whether or not the application. Yeah, yeah, the, even at least, like, thank you so much for your inquiry or for your communication. So you know it went through. Well, that's mm -hmm. yeah. The so, other thing. Or, you did not complete this adequately. Go back. Right. <laughs> I can put that on my email. Things. The way the applications come in now, if you put them in on the website or mail them, and they go upstairs to the county manager's office or the public information officer. They pull it off the website or open the envelope, then they send it down to me. So, you know, since they're obviously not, they're the first ones to touch it, but they're not responding, so then I just need to make sure that when I get it, I'm responding first. 
Or that they just set up their receipt when they receive something that comes yeah, in. I don't know if our website can do that. I can ask. I would think so. I, I think you have, it's an administrative the question. The more you can make it automatic, the better. Yeah. Because the other thing is that you have enough to do. human error, you're going to lose some from when it comes in to when it gets to you. Mm -hmm. And so if, the, if, if, if when it gets opened or when it gets pulled off the website, that's the first email if you don't hear from Gail Hendrickson in uh, a month, you know, 30 days, please contact her. And then we, then you, there's a way of being a feedback loop to be able to track it down if it got lost, you know, on your desk or in your email or if it never it got forwarded sales. to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, usually they just email it down. Yeah. I think people want to um, feel like their involvement is, means something, is meaningful. And that, that not just about the application, but about every yeah. um, encounter that they have with the county, some sort of. So what I'm hearing is to ensure better communication or citizen involvement it, uh, is acknowledge that the citizens are reaching out, whether it's yeah. an auto reply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or it's pretty, it could be pretty simple. And just you don't have to resolve anything. Just say yeah, yes. It I doesn't go into a black yeah. hole. Right, so then, and if you okay. don't hear back, then you no, can completely. Back. I think that's a huge step forward. Give mm -hmm. it a time frame. Because working further down the road, so none of us like the. We we value your time. Please stay on the line. <laughs> <laughs> customer. You know, we don't want to hear that. Yeah, we that's more like we that. received <laughs> your uh, your uh, communication. Uh, if you don't hear a response in thirty days or whatever you choose it, it to be, I think you know I wouldn't go beyond thirty days. Please contact us again, just so that there's communication. Awesome. That would be a huge step forward. So, um, and then I, I guess part of, I'm afraid to say the next thing because I'm afraid that you have limited staff and time and hours. And if once you create the expectation, if you cannot deliver on it, it's almost, it's worse than creating the expectation to begin with, right? So I guess that's the next piece, is that is there, is there sufficient bandwidth within, in your yeah. world? Is this send off an acknowledgement email? No, mm -hmm. not that part. Oh. But the, but the, so if someone brings an issue, and then, you know, how, because I would imagine you could get, a, you know, a hundred requests of, and there might be little things, some of them might be yeah. big things, some of them might be kind of undefined things that you have to do some more research on. I guess how do you manage all of that such that, you can um, effectuate a response. I mean, that's more or less what we do on any given day. Okay. Yeah. We so, get people who will email us about property questions uh -huh. or code complaints or I think uh, we've had people, well, when that uh, Pacific Power was doing their Okay. That was fun. And sometimes you know, and Julia especially is very good, but we do all acknowledge emails like that, and mm -hmm. I, I do say I did not acknowledge anybody who sent me an application. I put them in my electronic folder and said, well, yeah. it's time to take these, yep. I'll, I'll worry about it. Um, but in other emails we do respond to, and we try to respond to them, even if it's just to say, we don't know, but we'll research it and get back to you. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with phone calls, we, don't, we try to pick up the phone all the time. If it goes voicemail, we usually try to return a call within a day. Mm -hmm. So um, so I think we have the bandwidth okay. and staff power, because it's pretty much what we do on a daily basis. Okay. I, I think today was an example of where you scored, you know, with Dionisio and Jody, where originally, you know, it, when they first sent information to you, they were basically pissed at the Anglo-European invaders of their Chinook homelands and made that abundantly clear. All at the same time, while while you were, were trying to have everybody get along with, you know, where everybody's happy. Uh, and and that, that's kind of a hard starting, you know, that we all, that we do everything by consensus. And it's very hard when you have yeah. that. It's impossible. Plus the bulldozers. Yeah. Uh, and and I, I think they, they certainly gave you a medal for... I can only thank you for your outreach. But, but 
you well done. you picked up on it. Where are we on this? Yeah. Okay, so if you have not completed it, um, I think you've given me enough that if you don't want to actually fill it out and turn it in, I, I can yep. do that. Um, yeah, 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 I'm yeah, happy yeah. to fill it out because I, I wanted to have a conversation before because I wanted to be thoughtful in my response and not just go, oh, this this sucks. I mean, that's helpful to a point. But uh, If you do want to fill them out and bring them back at our next meeting, which is August 1st or 8th, yeah. Um, yeah, if you would do that. Yeah. What I would like to do is be able to compile all these from the different one, uh, committees and then put them all together for the uh, countywide board. Okay. Okay. Are we going to have another one of these for homework for the next time? Uh, goal two does not really have any policies though to look at. There's really nothing to pull out, so no worksheet for next. Oh, time. nothing. Okay. Okay. Amazingly, uh, uh, a couple things that just went out of my head. Uh, it's not on the agenda, but I think it would be helpful if we did do introductions each time of the committee, not necessarily the public, because I'm I'm anticipating that we're going to have like 20 people out there. I like it. It won't take that many that much time. However, I think it's important that the public knows who we are. Yes. Does that sound good? Yes. I, I think except for the part of leaving out the uh -huh. people who are a lot harder to scrape up. Of, yeah. They, you know, that it's like, so they, if you want people to be involved, let them yeah. be acknowledged. Okay. 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 Yes, by all means. Okay. Yeah, yeah well, John's like difficult, that. but he likes yeah. being acknowledged. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other thing is approval of minutes. Yeah, they're not at uh, Robert's rules, you know. They're more of a summary than minutes. Oh, okay. But, um, yes, if you want to. But but the minutes really only have to have action items, so so actually they're they're just fine. You okay, know, but uh, what I would, what I'm getting at is I think it would be useful. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. To have read the summary, and then if there are things that we need to correct, right. there should be a time in the agenda. For us to say, right, the discussion. Did this yes. adequately describe our last meeting? Yes. Or do we need to add things? Or yes. Our, our, as far as it had the corporate name wasn't yes. shown as having been here. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to add the um, visitor yeah. list. To yeah. Summary. Yes, I, I, I so, I'm so moved that we have a. Am, am, is that right? Is that what yes. we do? I so move that we um, include a time to discuss the summary of the previous uh, uh, meeting. Uh, it's such that okay, it can be approved. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> Cousin. I know. Yes. Annoying. Yes. Okay, if I think of that other thing, I'll leave it up. But okay. uh, this is the time that uh, we're open for public comment and input. I'm looking at you, John. I would love to do that. Okay, oh. you're up. After 15 years of living here, the first five of which I was very active, I became very disenchanted with the county. Uh, it's a little bit of background, mainly because a lot of the county managers are just, we're just, in fact, just the, the last guy that I thought was worth his beans was the guy from uh, the onion country out there. Uh, Walla Walla? What? You said onion country? The onion country out there. Who's the onion? Dwayne Cole? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I thought he was. Oxnard. He only yeah, came around for it. Onion country, Oxford. Yeah, yeah, but he was extremely <laughs> calm. <about Yes>. I <laughs> and the rest of them have been hacked, as far as I'm concerned. And they, they've left their mark. Okay. Um, one of the things, before we get into the public. Uh, eight years ago, when the Cascadia thing came to a, sort of a head, uh, there was this document published uh, and it had to do with how are we going to survive after this earthquake. And in there was a little statement that said the coast is going to be without power for six months. And I said, that is a, that's a death knell. 
and we have to do something about it. So I immediately went into the uh, memory banks and decided what we could do. And wrote a little letter to our uh, Johnson, whichever, and then wrote a little letter to uh, uh, our other, uh, at that time, oh, that just retired? Oh, Debbie Booth? Yeah, Debbie Booth. So. Oh, and, and neither one of them had the faintest idea of what it was I was talking about, uh, and so it went nowhere. But now we are finally catching up. People are now starting to think, well, I know where I'm supposed to go when it when it shakes, but of course most of the people at Seaside have nowhere to go, as you well know, because it's too far. They'll die because they don't have any vertical escape capability. But anyway, one of the things we're going to do, or try to do, is create a, a, an electrical capability locally here using renewable power. But to do that, you have to create a structure, because Pacific Power basically told me to go shimmy up a tree. Okay, they're going to provide renewable power from Wyoming, and that's it. Okay, besides there's something on the roof of this supervisor's building, which probably needs a cup of coffee or something. But anyway, so we're going to do this. It's a wonderful idea. At one time, the Board of Supervisors, in the odd moments, studied the fact of forming a PUD. Okay, everybody else around us has got PUDs. Okay, there's a reason for that. It's you can buy electricity 30% cheaper than Pacific Power can buy it for, and everybody would get a reduction in their power rates. Okay? That's one reason. But the other reason is you have some sort of local control so that you don't have to go to Pacific Power and basically say, we don't care what you want, we're going to do it this way. Now, it's a local power idea, but this particular power system has a tremendous design capability. We have our own power grid here basically along the coast. It's just totally ours. There's no complications. There's no nothing. If you form a PUD that looks like this, the coast line, you can follow the Cascadia PUD, that's what I'm calling it. Okay? You leave out the Astoria people because they never want to do anything rational anyway. But anyway, uh, this is a press release and we're going to get the uh, people to sign the petition. Uh, I have a petition all done, I have a feasibility study all done, I know how to do these things, I know how to do a lot of these kind of things. Uh, and so the work is done, all we need to do is get the petition signed and we're using the four large retail industries here in Warrington, uh, Walmart, Costco, uh, Home Depot, uh, Wendy's. Wendy's, yes. <laughs> Frosty's forever. <laughs> our, our new area. Yeah. Fred Meyer. Our, our employees, basically, because this means tremendous savings in terms of those particular businesses. And the school districts, they, Seaside would save at least $400,000 a year. City would save a This is a press release. Uh, we haven't gone out yet because I haven't been ready to go out yet. I'm trying to get somebody to pay me to do this. That's money. But what, you know, here's a way. I got to communicate. How do in the hell do I do that? You know, to the newspaper. I try. You know, but let's face it. The newspaper is headed downhill at a rate uh, known to known to man. Okay, it's submerging so quickly. You can Scottish write a letter to the will editor. Pay you not to do it. Hmm? Scottish Power will pay you not to do it. Yeah. Well. Anyway, but here, you know, this is this is in your area. This is not in Seaside. This is in Bath. Of your area near the consolidated school site. This will be an area that you have to deal with. And there will be a renewable power plant back in there. There will be two lakes back there for energy storage. There will be all kinds of things that will happen there. But I don't know how to communicate. I, I'm just a citizen. I give so, yeah. Do you have an extra one? Because no, we're going to give this to you, and yes. you're going to distribute it to us. I will us. put it in our you are. Now, that, that, that's up beside the point. The other thing I wanted to talk about is our latest example of citizen involvement what the state of the art here is in Classic County. Okay. You may know that I became an instant uh, 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 bad guy. Celebrity. No, no. no. Okay. Pariah. Don't, pariah. I like that one. Pariah. Because I was against all the kids getting a, a new school. Okay? I, I worked with the school district for almost two years to get that school bond down with new alternatives and so forth. And then I found out that the superintendent was lying to the board. 
Okay? I mean, he just plain lied. He said that one of the schools was not capable of standing an earthquake, and that was wrong. He just moved the truth around. Well, the board didn't know that. I knew it because I don't trust any of these people. I trust none of them. Uh, to ever do the right, to ever know what it is they're saying. They say what it is they want, and then they say, well, everybody has little white lies. Well, these are huge white lies. This is an $80 million blunder, and it's all been perpetuated by the fact that they've laid it on these people a guilt trip about we have to save our children, kind of a, Well, I'm as interested, I've been on three school boards in my life, I'm as interested as anybody else is about it, but if you can do it for $40 million rather than $120 million, shouldn't you at least look at it, for Christ's sakes? Well, the school district said, we don't work in alternatives. We don't look at alternatives. You know, the head of the planning commission, whatever his uh, actor, whatever that guy's name, I don't know. Was he tall and thinks he's an Adonis kind of a guy? No, that's not Bruce. You're talking city. No, I'm talking county, okay. Because to, to do this, they had to come up with violating one of the key things that you're going to be asked to do. Don't go out of the, don't redo the uh, urban growth boundary. So you have to get the approval of the city and you have to get the approval of the county. Well, you know, the city, number one, they never wanted to talk about any of this stuff. The mayor of the city of Seaside, of which you know him quite well, uh, yes, the Reverend, uh, said, well, you know, if the people voted for it, that's good enough for me. I don't care. Okay? And then the county guy said, I don't care if you can save $80 million. Why are you doing this? Why are you trying to hurt our children? I'm not trying to hurt the children. I'm trying to do some rational, good planning and looking at alternatives, you know, mm -hmm. and I get this, all of this bull. And the, and the organization that sandbagged me was this one Oregon Department of Lion Conservation and Development. Okay, they're on your little charts there. Those people came out before anybody ever approved anything except the, they came out and said, we approve it. They never looked at any alternatives. They wouldn't even talk to me. They wouldn't, even, they wouldn't even do it. They just took the rug right out from underneath everybody else. They're the ones that are in charge of making sure that the city and the county certify that they need that land and that they have to have that land in order to do this. They didn't need that land. And the, and the architect, he refused to commit himself until the five minutes before the meeting opened. And then he wrote it down and then he got it in there, and then I couldn't go to, to get the land board of appeals because they wouldn't finance my appeal, you know, which is another thing that's wrong. They'll finance appeals of, of crooks to, that are, or whatever it is, but they won't finance the $200 fee or whatever it is. Well, if, you know, I'm not going to do it. Anyway, so I wrote a letter to the Jim Rue, who the director of this, with my final thing said, DLCD has demonstrated by its lack of analysis and reasoning on this project that it is not an organization serving the needs of the citizens of, organization, of Oregon. So, you know, this is out there. It means nothing. Okay, but here, here it is. And they sent the letter in way before anything. And you know why they wanted, they wanted to make sure that the city... So this is an example of a citizen trying to get involved. I know how to do this thing. I know how to do this surveying. I know how to calculate costs. I know how to do these things. And they won't listen to you. They will not listen to you. They will not listen to anything. And, you know, that's just the way it is. This is a moment. Okay. And just leave it there. So I'll get out of your hair. Yay! Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you, John. Another, another voice from the wilderness. <laughs> and sometime, you know, now that they've turned down cap and trade, now somebody's going to look at point sources and we're going to have another discussion about Bradwood mm. and the energy. Oh, it has nothing to do with LNG. Why would, you, why would you be concerned about that? Why would you be concerned about that? LNG? Uh, uh, yes. It has nothing to do with LNG. Well, what are you talking about, Bradwood? Well, why does Bradwood have to have something to do about LNG? 
Your mind is as close as everybody else. Uh, I'm sorry, I mis must have misunderstood what you... Well, you probably did, because basically we have Bradwood, which is an industrially zoned piece of property in there that has a... You don't have to dredge anything to get ships in there. If we're a minor ship, you have to do nothing. It has no impact on salmon. It's correctly zoned. Everything is totally zoned, and it has nothing to do with LNG. It has to do with removing the emissions from those smokestacks that are down there pumping it out down at West, 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 Westport? Westport? Westport is Port Westport. Westport. No, it's just Westport. Huh? Port, yeah, Port across Port Westport it. is by um, Longview. Yeah, so well, yeah. it's, it's about, about there's four Westport? power plants Westport. down there. Yeah, they come, they, well, are you thinking about, are you thinking about um, Bradwood the Moana, the mill? No, I'm they thinking. They've got stacks too. I mean, I'm not sure. What but they're, they're, they're not the big emitters. Well, they're big something. But you're thinking about Port Westford by long term. Well, yeah, that's where it's so easy to do, and it doesn't cost you anything. And now, it's, now our wonderful governor said, well, I can't get Gavin Trace, so she says, I'm going to go to point sources to try to regulate it. Well, that's what you should have been doing, number one, right away, because you can do it for no cost. You can eliminate all those emissions, but nobody will listen. Everybody says, Bradwood, that must mean LNG, and I'm against LNG. Well, you know, I'm the one that went, that fought LNG at the state level, for heaven's sakes, and people just are just totally irrational. Uh, that's... Be sure to give me one, John. Oh, yeah, yeah. you do that. I there we go. Will. I, 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 I'm, I'm, the, here beyond here. I'm the one. <laughs> Hopeless. Hopeless. Thank yes. you very much. I'm again, I'll get out of your hair. But well, thank you, John. Fidget is enough John. there on the end, Evan. Are you you're through fidgeting? Well, I'm probably through fidgeting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't have it. But i bring in the tribe of the Dunsers next time, and we're going to really take it. We may go to war over this thing. I don't know. How many Dunsers are there? No, there's at least three of them because I had three kids. Are you giving me the... No, 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 no I'm not. I'm just saying... the earplugs in? What are you doing? They, they asked an earplug. I was, I was going to offer one to anyone who needed one. Here. Let's not be rude. I, not. I'm not. Okay. Well, she, she said I'm a lovely man, especially right, at the lunch right. one. Right. Yes. And didn't we get something done? We absolutely did. Yes. So Bring easy. Bring it in. That's what I'm saying. Safe now. Yeah, there you go. Okay. 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 I'm really excited. I'm, I'm, I'm really busy. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for the entertainment. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we'll have distribution of background materials for the next meeting. All right. So at right. your seats, along with your candy and your water, there was a rubber banded pile of paper. Um, just to go through that quickly, I, I have to say that because I'm very you know. Um, <laughs> July I know it's hard 30, to sit for this length of time. Yeah. July 31st at 10 o'clock uh, at the Boyington Building, yeah. Lisa Phipps from Department of Land Conservation and Development will be coming down to give a workshop about goal two to all the CAC members, so not just your committee, but all, all those uh, five others. Um, she's very good. She's very funny. She's very knowledgeable. If you have not met her, can you videotape um, it for those of us who are? Yeah, we, we actually most. can because it's at the Boyington, so we can. Um, and then it'll yeah. go on the website, and it is open to the public. So please encourage people to attend again. Those, those are the flyers you? No. Yes. That. No, no, the ones you gave us. No, that was, was for the open house on the twentieth. Yeah. yeah. At ten a.m. here at the same building. So again, make that public. Um, underneath that is a big fold-out map that has the uh, land use designations. Uh, is that this county. map? Yes. Okay. And uh, is that the one that I have? Yeah, yeah. there it is. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but if you fold it out, it's got all the six land use designations and where they're applied. It is a little hard to read, even though it's a big map, because it's a big county. But um, Then there's a lot of background uh, stuff that will tie into what Lisa will talk about. Goal two primarily is sets part of the, not so much the process, but it establishes the framework for how you will look through the next remaining, what do we got here, 18, 16 goals. So uh, we're going to talk uh, some about goal exceptions. Julia mentioned today the rural uh, communities. We're going to talk about uh, urban growth boundaries. Well, there's, we're going to talk about LUBA. Uh, there's a matrix in here that breaks down the six land use categories and then the zoning districts that go with it. So that gives you an idea. 
Uh, we're planning for a 20 year period, so you've got a population projection for the state that go through uh, 2017 through 2067. From PSU? Yep. Yep. From PSU. Uh, and so that's going to give you kind of the, the basis of how much do we need to grow, if we need to grow, and things that we need to think about. Um, there's a summary report for goal two kind of like the one you had for goal one. It talks about like, planning the state, how we do it here in the county. Uh, there's a little bit of information about the rural communities, or the boundaries, goal exceptions, and MUBA, the dreaded four-letter word, like the use for the fields. Um, then the, the remainder of the paper is statewide planning goal two, which you will notice is a nice, petite little thing of three pages, double-sided. Versus class of county goal two, uh, which is two hundred pages double sided. It's handwritten. handwritten though. What what is the handwritten? The thing? hand. So the handwritten things. That's so professional. Isn't it? Yeah. Cool. yeah. These are the areas. These are the actual parcel tax lot numbers for the areas where we've taken goal exceptions, where oh. we've said uh -huh. these goals do not apply to these properties. Oh. Um, so and then they coincide. There's actually a map, a series of maps in here. So if you see like map B, um, yeah. you would flip back here, and then it will give you the numbers, and it'll tell you what type of exception. And we'll go into all that next month when we meet. But basically, the lands were what's the exact wording? Irrevocably and um, committed, committed and built out or something like that. So it was very specific. So I don't expect you to have everything read and memorized, but it's just background material that um, you can call upon as we have our discussions. Um, if you have any questions between now and then, please feel free to reach out to me. So. Or Julie. It's your turn. Yeah. And that, I think, is everything I have. Yes. So um, may I ask a question? Absolutely. So um, in reading the goal one stuff with a fine tooth comb, I realized that there is, it, it prompted a number of questions that I don't know that it makes sense to bring up in kind of this in this uh, uh, environment, but I would like to know the answers to them. So would it, what would the best way of getting answers to those questions? So would we email you? Yeah, email me or call me or Julia. Okay. Uh, either one of us. And I think, do we hand out permits to the fine tooth comb? Yeah, I think we handed out. I didn't, I didn't bring my purse. I didn't bring my phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I well I have an but email. But my email always yes. has my contact info in there. So. No, that's that's great. Okay, so then, yeah, and it's just kind of more educationally for me because I like to understand kind of what the constraints are. Yeah. So okay, beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, closing comments. Oh. Cub Scouts used to be start and end every meeting with a howl. And it's kind of a bonding experience. So, oh! You go for it. Okay. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I, I so motion. Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the camera. Thank you, Robert. Yes. Thank you. Yes.